Hmm. Hey guys, so uh, here we are, and I'm going to show you my inventory with my assistant uh, lap here, who I've made immortal uh, just for testing purposes. So the inventory, I think, is 80 different weapons at this point, and I've been pretty consistent on that for a long time now. Uh, up top, we have a row of quick-step daggers. It's kind of typical at this point to go with that. They're all heavy infused so that they go to the top with um, sort by effect. Um, I went with a dagger because it's going to deal the most crit damage. If I can just uh, get Lap here to... Eh, he's kind of not cooperating. Anyway. Um, Rotten Grew Dagger, I think, is one of the absolute best... Oh, that was weird. Oh, I was AFK for a while, and he actually broke one of my uh, one of my gloves. Incredible. Anyway, uh, Rotten Grew is a very long dagger. It deals status effect. It has good strength scaling. Um, it's not as good as Murky, but it's one of the best daggers in the game, and daggers are one of the best classes of weapon in the game. Uh, Murky, not really going to go too far into why that's good to have and then split leave we also want heavy infused um, murky would actually be better on refined with this stat spread but i wanted it up top so it stays heavy uh stone parma this guy so normally you would want black knight shield or ethereal oak shield those are kind of the best medium shields with weapon skill on them um Stun Parma, though, is actually not much worse than, um, than Black Knight Shield. Here, I'll Gamer mode deactivated. untoggle. So, you know, you can't block literally everything with it, but it's it's about as good as Black Knight Shield. Gamer mode activated. Um, it has 100% physical block. It has almost the same stability as Black Knight Shield, and, importantly, the reason why I have it is it's infusible and even when it's heavy infused it still has a hundred percent physical block so that's why um i went with it because i don't want it to be uninfused or uninfusable i don't want black knight shield because it would actually go underneath the iron round shields and i want these to be the very bottom of my inventory uh we'll kind of get to that as we go down in the inventory list uh so split leaf it, it's good. If I knew how to split leaf infinite, I would demonstrate that, but I, I can't really do that consistently. Um, it does have a useful pivot swap. And uh, maybe if I drop a couple weapons, I can kind of demo that real quick. Alright, that took a few tries, but uh, there you go. Basically, if you swap to Lorien's, or I think Profaned, you're going to get the, um, it just kind of knocks the target back. Not the most useful uh, pivot swap, but it is kind of interesting. And uh, that's it with RK Pugs. Most weapons, if they have a hitbox, are not going to have the knockback effect, unfortunately. Let's get our items again. Alright, we got everything back. Okay, so the next few weapons don't really have a lot of swaps, really. Uh, they're just good weapons to have. So they're cell swords. Um, very strong weapon. Does a lot of damage. Unless you're playing on like a strength build. Pretty much any build should have cell swords. Drang twin spears are super obnoxious. I'm gonna turn my fashion sheets on real quick. 
don't mind me. Just cause uh just cause we're unmodded doesn't mean we uh can't have any fun. So if I put on my light roll armor, twin spears become pretty obnoxious and broken, especially on high latency. This is kind of my main go-to setup if I'm playing during China hours uh, as well. Uh, I only really have one regen item in the in this inventory, uh, so if I want an offhand regen item, it has to be blessed harp. And of course that's lighter than stone parma, so I can put on like leo ring, chlorinthy, and maybe even get really mean and put on like blood ring, that kind of thing. I've had times where I go like four rings and, and we'll put on like Sun Princess as well. Um, but I digress. Alright. Uh, so that's Twin Spears. Reinforced Club. I just, I love this weapon. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of like a slower curve sword, but with hyper armor. And if you stagger the hits, you can roll catch the hell out of people. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, simple Lothric Sword. So I wanted a simple weapon in this inventory. And I can kind of use the fact that this is sorted by element to uh, just make it any weapon I want, really. And this is when we start to get into like actual swaps. Um, There. So this is a stance to stance swap, which I only recently learned about, but there's actually a lot of them that are pretty cool and fun. But you basically, instead of, you know, how you do a four stance where it's a little more involved with what buttons you have to press, with this, you literally just do the weapon art, switch, and then do the same weapon art again. And there's no, like, limit to how many times you can do it. Um, you just... Other than, you know, stamina and FP. There's a little, uh, little lag time where you have to wait. But anyway, uh, a lot of these that have, um, that, that involve great swords will do a burger flip. They'll, they'll send the enemy skywards. So that's pretty cool. Um, I just like it because if I go for a guard break with the Lothric Knight Sword, there's something I can do as kind of a follow-up. And I think that's pretty fun. Um, of course, you could force stance with this if you had Lothric or Lorien nearby. Could do, um... Hang on. Could do, uh... Yeah, you can do the uh, Gundir Glaive Poke, which is... Honestly, something that's never seemed terribly useful to me. But it is fun. Um, but that that's what happens if you force stance to a glaive, by the way. It, it does like a weird poke thing. Um, so there's, there's that attack. I probably should have mentioned um, Dagger and Toledo step swaps, which are a lot of fun. See, I have daggers positioned uh, five ticks over Leto. You can do that. That's pretty cool. Uh, Blessed Harp is a boring weapon. There's not really anything going on. You could technically step swap it to Wolf Knight Greatsword here. Not particularly useful unless your opponent has a brain the size of a walnut. Um, but I digress. Okay. Aquamarine Dagger is potentially the swappiest weapon in Dark Souls 3. And I love it. I love having it. I'm so sad that it's 18 int because otherwise I would have been using it a long time ago. Um, but it, it is such a fun weapon. So you can do step swaps with it because it's a dagger. That's a very good step swap. Um, the main thing is if you just have Aqua and Lorien's Greatsword, you suddenly have a ton of really good options, really good mix-ups. Um, and I guess I'll talk briefly about the moveset. So if you just use it two-handed, it's just like any other dagger. 
pretty much the same. Um, the R2 is is not bad if you're if you're trying to do like a staggered roll catch. The rolling R1 is fine, um, but obviously where it comes into its own is the weapon art. And this, I think, is the only weapon in the game with a running weapon art. So if you just run and hit L2, it gives you that. If you roll, it has a rolling weapon art. And the thing is, those are actually linked to the normal weapon art. So here's R1, R1. That's a terrible viewing angle because we're behind a tree. But that's the normal R1, R1. And then here's the weapon art R2. And the thing is, all of these have different swaps that they can be used for. It's also not a bad backstab weapon. But uh, all of these have different things you can do with them. So if you do weapon art R1, R1, swap to Lorien's and hit R1, that's going to give you the burger flip. I think uh, some people call that a midway. I don't know if it's... Uh, swap terminology is pretty messed up and, and honestly not consistent. But some people call that the midway. You can also do Force Stance, so if you do Weapon Art R2 and then swap to Lorien's and do the Force Stance um, inputs. You're going to get the uh, the Burger Flip. Let me see if I can actually... Sorry, I've been, I've been swapping for a while now. I'm going to mess up some inputs, I think. Patches, don't be like that. All right. That's more than you could actually do in game um, if you didn't have unlimited stamina like I do right now. But you get the idea. The uh, the one that actually looks like it would flip them into the air does. The other one doesn't have a hitbox. Um, okay, I'm going to try and do a pivot swap. If it takes too long, I have some clips that I might just play over it. Okay, that did not take long at all. Cool. Um, so yeah, basically... Pivot swap with this is literally just going to do the same as the four stance burger flip. It's the same thing. It's uh, it's not particularly um, different. And then you can actually chain them together. And that is something I love a lot. But basically, if you do the four stance and then switch back to it and hit R1. Uh, it's going to do that weapon art, and then you can do the midway right out of it. Sorry, I'm going to I'm gonna try and get these swaps right, but I have been... It's been a day. It's been a long day. Oh no. Oh no, where's my mojo? There. Um, so that's a really cool swap. I haven't pulled off that whole chain. On anyone in game yet but I hope to it's pretty cool um, obviously if you're doing all of these you can also just do the step swaps that's a pretty good wake up pretty effective uh, what else oh if you do the running weapon art and then hit R2 it actually just goes straight into the normal weapon art R2 and you can do force dance out of that and if you do rolling weapon art you can just do the midway right out of that um, and there's lots of like, let me see, if you do Weapon Art R2, R2, hang on. You can do Force Dance. If you do Weapon Art R2, R1, oh really, it doesn't. Okay, it, it's a little faster, hang on. Yeah, you can do Midway. So there's a lot of ways you can chain together these different Weapon Arts for good mix-ups. I've mostly been favoring Running weapon art, R2 weapon art, and then force stance. That's a lot of fun. Um, we're going to jump ahead to Frayed Blade because these two can, they have a funny swap in particular. Uh, so you do weapon art R2. You don't swap to Lorien's. It's a, it's a kind of tight window. It's not the tightest. Okay, so what you just saw... I swapped from Aqua Marine after doing Weapon Art R2 over to Frayed Blade and hit R2 out of menu. And it did that cool slash effect. And then I switched to Onikiri Ubidachi, hit R2 again, 
and that gives you the cut parry animation from Onikiri Ubadachi. And the parry frames are pretty good, but I am not going to be able to demonstrate that on lap, so I'll try and put a little clip in here kind of showing how it works. Um, but that's fun, and then if I get the parry, I switch to Black Knight Great Axe, which is a really cool weapon. Gotta love it. Pretty stylish. It's a little overused for um, parry montages or whatever, but... I love it for the wake up because after you've reposted someone, you go over them, you, you two hand the weapon and then you hit R2. Very solid wake up. Um, by the way, if you are having trouble surviving that wake up, um, if you have a shield, just block. Literally just block out of standing up and it'll generally let you roll out of it if you block the first part. Okay, so that's Aqua. Um, Aqua had... Oh, wait, there's more. There's always more swaps. Um, I already recorded this earlier, so I might just show you a pre-recording, but... Timing is a little finicky. I almost had that. I let go of L2. The problem is you have to hit it at the right time. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that is the Aquamarine into Wolf Knight Greatsword Infinite. Um, it's just a stance to stance swap. You just do Weapon Art R1, you swap to Wolf Knight Greatsword, and you do Weapon Art R1. And you have to kind of stagger it, and I recommend after the first swap, you step stagger it. Just like how I'm doing with the Aqua right now. And it is an infinite, it is a true infinite, and if it's working, it will be desynced on your opponent's screen. So it's going to look very weird, like you're just constantly doing the Wolf Knight flip on their screen. Uh, the damage is generally not very good. So if you manage to get a kill with it, uh, kudos to you. Uh, yeah, okay. There's all that. So Ring Knight Straight Sword is very cool. And this might be the part where I can't do pivot swaps anymore. I'm generally only good at them for a, a short amount of time. If this takes too long, again, I'll just show pre-recorded footage. Um, okay. So that was the pivot, and then you might have noticed that I swapped to Onikari Ubadachi afterwards. Um, that is a dream swap that I would like to do someday, but it's very situational. Um, but basically, you can do the pivot swap into Lorien, burger flip, and then right out of that you can force dance with Onikari Ubadachi and get that uh, cut parry animation again. And then obviously there's still Black Knight Great Axe right there for repost. Um, but basically... The burger flip is the exact same as if you do four stance like that with a weapon R2 from Ring Knight Straight Sword. Um, so there's that. Although that one is really bad, it, it's not worth using. Mostly you just want to use the pivot. Um, but you can also do step swaps into Uggs with that. I've been getting some use out of that. And then also there's the RKSS Midway. You do the full weapon art, and then you swap. And this one has much more generous time, like really generous timing compared to Aquamarine. You have like that whole recovery, and then you can do it. Uh, so that obviously burger floats, patches over here is being kind of obnoxious and not really letting me get that swap, but anyway. So that's Ring Knight Straight Sword. It's actually, I like it a lot, but it's a lot... It's a bit less swappy than Aquamarine, to be honest. Um, so there's that. Now we have Valor Heart, recent addition to my inventory. Uh, I like it. I think it's fun. Uh, I mostly use it without two-handing, like this. I don't really use the Valor Heart shield too much. Um, but you can step swap it into Ring Knight uh, paired Ultra Great Swords like this. So that's kind of cool. You can force stance with it. And Ring Knight Paired Ultra Great Swords is weird because when you four stance Burger Flip with them, it doesn't send the target into the air. 
it smashes them into the ground, which is kind of cool. I kind of like it. Um, the step swap is pretty cool, and sometimes it can even combo, at least partially, into the full weapon art. Very nice. Um, okay, and then the Valor Heart Charge, you can stance to stance swap over to Great Swords, and that will burger flip. Like that. Uh, it will generally be desynced on your opponent's screen. But that's fine. No big deal. Um, you can do other weird like little stance to stance things with it. Um, but I don't think the second one actually has a hitbox if you stance to stance to most things. So there's that. Um, Great Sword of Judgment is a really cool looking sword. I'll just take a moment to point out like the detail on this blade is really nice. I hadn't looked at it closely until recently, and it's a really cool weapon. Alright, um, so it's not the best greatsword, just straight up. Um, like, it has the bad R2, the range isn't very good, the damage generally isn't very good. Um, but, you can stance to stance, and buff Ring Knight Straight Sword with it. And it looks so cool, so drippy. I love it. Um, actually, can you stance to stance Valor Heart? I wonder. I don't think so. Maybe you can. But I don't know. Um, and then you could probably, you can do it to a uh, Wolf Knight as well if you wanted. Um, but anyway, there's that. Um... So, Wolf Knight Greatsword is a long greatsword. It is very long, and that is kind of cool. The main thing it has going for it is the weapon arts are really badass. And you can actually force stance with it, if I could. Sometimes I have more trouble with the swaps that have like the longer waiting time as opposed to the faster ones, because you can just kind of hammer the buttons on faster swaps. The ones where you wait, the timing really matters. Alright, yeah, so you can do that. Not the most useful swap, to be honest, but it is there. It exists. Um, and I'll just mention the Frayed Blade into uh, Greatsword Stance to Stance. Okay, that wasn't it. Um... Okay. So you can basically stance to stance swap um, the katana slashy weapon art onto a greatsword. That was not it. The timing is a little precise, and unfortunately these are positioned diagonally from each other. Okay. And then you can do four stance out of that if you want. Uh, so that's all very cool. Lorien's is, um, it's an okay great ultra greatsword. It actually has my favorite move set, although I generally prefer Lothric Knight Ultra just because it has light and damage and you can buff it. Um, but Lorien's is not bad. It, it's very solid. I like the charge poke. I like the rolling poke. Um, yeah. Mostly it's in here for swaps. Ring Knight Parrot Ultra Great Swords um, are cool. The L1 can be a pretty good tool if someone's, like, panic rolling away from you. Um, I don't actually have anything... If you use, like, a glaive or a weapon with a spinny weapon art, um, generally you can, like, uh, weapon art swap onto it with this. But I don't have anything in here that can do that right now. Alright, Demon Scar. So I'm you know, I'm not even going to try to do this swap while I'm talking. Uh, I'm going to play footage over this because it took me a really long time to do the Sacred Flame pivot swap. But basically, you can pivot swap casting Sacred Flame onto another weapon as long as it is a two-hit repost weapon. Um, meaning anything that will, without Hornet Ring, hit the opponent two times, um, it will insta-kill 
the target. It will do so much damage that it can kill them like five times over. It's hilarious. Um, my character does not have the faith requirement to actually wield Demon Scar, so the damage is, is horrible. But if I land this swap, the damage is insane. So there is that. Irithyll Rapier is, uh, is a fun weapon. Um, Estoc is probably better in most cases, but I will say the damage is not terrible, and the crit damage is pretty decent, and Rapier is Rapier, and it can step swap in Toledo, and that's pretty neat. Frayed Blade is a cool weapon. I have a complicated relationship with it because I could just drop it and Onikiri Badachi and go back down to 137 if I wanted to. This is my 157 build, by the way. Um, I'll pause that slightly longer in case anyone wants to look at it. Okay. Um, so Fairy Blade has a cool weapon uh, moveset. You can, uh, if, you, if you practice with it, which is not something I have done so far, you can get pretty good with the animation cancel there. Although it doesn't really save you much time at all. It just looks neat. Um, the weapon art is pretty good, and if you free aim it, it can be pretty effective at catching people off guard. And as I showed earlier, you can, uh, you can stance to stand swap it. Not like that. Anyway, I already showed it. You can stance to stand swap it onto a greatsword. You can also... Force stance with it. Because, you know. Okay. Because we need more of that. The uh, Onikiri Badachi parry is kind of tight, honestly. There. Okay, I wish that landed. That would have been nice. Um, yeah. And Black Knight Great Axe. We already kind of covered this. Um, it honestly has a ton of really cool combos. And I want to try out some more of them just by using this weapon by itself. Uh, I really like that you can use like a uh, horseshoe ring or a horse hoof ring, the one that makes the kick animation longer or stagger further. I want to try that because if you kick someone with that, it can combo into the R2, which is very nice. Um, but yeah, very cool weapon. All right. Um... We are getting down here. So now we're on the Lido's, and Lido's are kind of one of my favorite weapons. It is very fun. It is also very heavy. Um, yeah. So, as I said earlier, can step swap, dagger into Lido, and that's kind of cool. You can move that swap it onto Gundir. By doing uh, L2, swap, step, L2, R2, like that. Now, be warned, if you do this, uh, it messes up the rolling attack for Gundir, and you will not be able to move during that whole animation, and it really sucks, and it doesn't even have a hitbox. So there's that. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll just cover all of the midways because they technically start with Leto. Alright. So that swap actually took me a while to like get the timing right on. But you do the Leto weapon art, and then at the very instant that the swap window opens, you swap to the next weapon, hit it, exit, hit R2. Okay? Very simple, honestly. But what happened there is normally the charge weapon art has a long windup, you see. But if you do Leto and then swap, that cuts out that startup animation and it will just instantly charge. And the, this is called a midway. This is the Leto midway. It, uh. Let's see. It also has it for Ring Knight Spear. It just goes into the second part of the Ring Knight weapon art there, and that's pretty cool. 
And then also, probably the best one is the Lido Gundir Midway. Because it does the full Gundir charge out of the Lido swing. And it does it really fast. Yeah, that's that's really nice. I like it. Um, you can also... Sorry, dog was concerned about a, a package delivery. Alright, uh, you can step swap out of the charge with Dragon Slayer Spear. And that's just going to lighting buff the Gundir, which is pretty cool. It only lasts for the duration of the charge, though. You can also step swap from Ring Knight Spear into Gundir and then complete the charge, and that looks pretty cool. And it also leaves a fire buff on the Gundir for a little while. Again, though, the rolling attack becomes scuffed and does not work. And I think, yeah, the running attack also doesn't work. Now, initially, you would think that this looks really cool and useful, but it doesn't have a hitbox, unfortunately. J just the running attack. The rest of it works just like normal Gundir and deals a little more damage, which is great. Uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it for... Okay, well, I guess I'll talk briefly about Gundir. Gundir is a really cool weapon. Uh, pretty much everyone uses it if you're on quality or strength. Um, now before anyone says, before anyone talks some shit uh, about me being a G9 clone or about the 25 Gundirs or whatever, um, I was using 25 Gundirs before G9. So there, take that. I was one of the guys that originally suggested that that he should do it. And then, you know what he did? He was like, nah, that looks dumb. And then he tried it, and, well, he never turned back, did he? Uh, anyway, Gundir is really cool. I like it. Uh, you can also, like... Hang on. You can Gundir charge into Lido and then do the smash, and that's kind of neat. You can do Ring Knight Spear in Toledo. That one's really use, uh, useless. I mean, don't really recommend it. You can buff Ring Knight Spear onto Dragon Slayer Sword Spear. That one's actually kind of nice. I kind of want to see how much damage it does. But he keeps, like, not getting hit by it. Ah, stop blocking, dude. Oh, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway. Gundir. Gundir, Gundir, Gundir. Is actually a useful weapon by itself. It's good for fishing. Because you can block while running around people. Um, R1 into weapon art is supposed to be a true combo patches. Excuse me. Maybe you have to be kind of close, I don't know. Yeah, it's supposed to be a true combo. It has hyper armor, so it's good for trading into a lot of different things. Um, it kind of is bad against great swords, just frankly. But anyway, I like Gundir a lot. Um, it's fun. Moving on. Demon Fists. It's going to be hard to demo this against patches. But R1 combos into the weapon art. And then the weapon art is actually a pretty good wake up. You, you R1 and then you do the weapon art. Or uh, if you want, I've only started seeing this more recently, but if you two-hand it, you can do uh, L1 into the weapon art. So that's Demon Fist. Uh, Millwood Great Bow is super duper useful. It's kind of hard to demonstrate how useful it is against patches. But basically, you can reaction trade with most things in the game and win. Like that. One thing I've started doing is I will use the Great Bow as a bait. I'll move out of it and then I'll parry. That, that would have been cool if it parried their patches. Um, but anyway, that one's useful. You can also just swap to Demon Fists. 
out of great bow. Can also just gun deer. You know, if you're being basic, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Great Bow is super useful. I like it. If you're doing like rafters survival, you can use Tam Tech and shoot it into the ground and then like use it as a time bomb basically. So that's cool. Okay. Uh, repeating crossbow is good just as a crossbow, but obviously it has a specific utility that you're all probably aware of. The bow gun, the Millwood 47, etc. Um, I actually don't have keybinds that would allow me to swap up on a pivot uh, swap, but you can swap uh, Gale onto Millwood Great Bell as a pivot swap, and it basically works the same as the Bow Glitch version, but it's a little faster. But I cannot demo that right now. Um, Arbalist is a pretty good expo. Um, it has the funny infinite hyper armor bash so that's cool you can use it as a refill um starter of course if you're low on estus and that's what pyromancy parting flame is now um when it comes to that sacred flame swap with the pivot swap earlier you can use pyromancer parting flame and if you are using a controller which you know god help you if you're trying to do pivot swaps on a controller like me because it's really really hard <laughs> um but you can use this and then underneath it you could have a follower to a uh, torch and that should work i think we have the talisman i use that to cast force very cool very useful and also cast replenishment my current build does not have tears of denial unfortunately Um, Priest Chime is just another regen option. And then we finally have the Iron Round Shields. Come on, Patches. Give me a parry. Real quick, buddy. Come on. Alright. And basically, my Litos are two ticks, two trigger ticks up from my iron round shields and that's how i get to a repost weapon i just uh get up there and i guess now i can finally talk about the core idea of this inventory is that there there are like weapons in between the daggers and the litos right but all of them can either swap one tick upwards to get to a dagger or one tick downwards to get to a gun deer. Um, of course, there's also split leaf, which goes to dragon slayer spear, which is kind of like gun deer. The tracking isn't as good, but the damage is very solid on that charge. And then I don't even need to worry about ring knight spear because that's where my my parma is. Um, so there's that. I don't think I might not have even mentioned the stone parma actually. Finally, I don't have to worry about a shield being underneath the Iron Round ones. Um, but basically, there's these four pillars of this inventory, right? Quick Step, which is great. Like, if I Quick Step swap out of something, and then Dagger swap, and then I can go to Leto, that's pretty cool. I know that if I'm at Leto, or if I'm at the dagger, I can always get to Lido swap. I know that if I do two ticks down, I get to Gundir. Um, oh, here's a good one. I know that if I'm doing a plunge, that was too fast. I, I have to try and do these things a little slower so people can catch what I'm doing. But if I do one tick up and then down, it goes to Lido every time, which is great for plunges. So there's that. Um, from Lido, I know I can always get to Gundir from any of them. And I know one more tick down is the Iron Round Shields for a parry. So this is the core of my inventory, is these four weapons. Quick Step Dagger, Lido, Gundir, 
and Iron Round Shield. And from Iron Round, I can go one down and it gets me back the dagger, or I can go a trigger tick up and it gets to Gundir, or another one up to get to Leto. And that is, that is how my inventory works and how it has worked for a long time. But finally, I can have five Iron Round Shields that are the, the bottom of the inventory. And that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, that is that is my weapon inventory. I think I've pretty much covered literally everything going on in here. I might make a follow-up video about armor at some point. It will be much shorter, of course, uh, as well as a video about rings. Again, probably much shorter. But um, oh, that was a failed swap. I can't I can't end on a failed swap. There. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. If you watch this whole thing, uh, feel free to ask me questions down in the bottom, uh, down in the comment section. And if there's any swaps that you think are cool and could have been done with this inventory that I didn't show, feel free to mention them. Um, there's obviously a lot more swaps than what I have going on in the inventory. Um, but anyway, I'll stop rambling now. Uh, everyone have a good day. Goodbye.